what it takes to be a texturing and surfacing artist in the CG industry. I always pondered upon this question when I went to school. I decided to become a texturing artist, but I don't know whether I have to get into animation or VFX. But today I have Rogan Walker, who worked on VFX and animation industry for the last 15 years. You worked on one of the well-known animation company, DreamWorks, where you worked on projects like Shrek, Puss and Boots, and Madagascar. His work also published in 3 Total Magazine, front cover. What Rogan had to say today is really valuable information, life-changing information. So I recommend you just don't listen to it, what he says. But get a pen and paper and take notes and it's really worth it. Let's welcome Rogan. Hi guys. So my name is Rohan Oak. Um, I have been working as a surfacing artist since 2004, which is around 15 years. And I'll soon be joining an animation studio to work on an upcoming show. Uh, prior to that, I worked at Rocket Science, Toonbox, DreamWorks Animation, and a medical animation studio, which did, which did uh, medical simulations, and also a couple of other animation studios. Uh, the work that I like in CG is either stylized or realistic so I can I can dabble between those two things um, the shows that I've worked on are uh, expanse uh, into the badlands uh, halo and also I've worked on some feature films like how to train your dragon crew Puss in Boots, Madagascar 3, and uh, recently the Nut Job 2. Uh, my current texturing tools are Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Mari. And uh, in terms of educating myself about CG, uh, I've learned a lot on the job. Uh, I've learned with a lot of online training. And uh, I had also studied at Fan Arts. I've done a game art and design course, and some other couple of other uh, computer graphics schools. So that would be a little bit about me. Rogan, can you show your reel? Yeah. So this is my website. If you can all see it. Uh, no. Can you present yourself? Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. All right. So this is my website. I worked on a few sculptures, I worked on a Hulk and a lady character and I also like doing substance designer work like the shaders and uh, I also do some illustration uh, work. So I could show you a few things. Uh, so this one was uh, Neptune sculpture that is in Bologna, Italy, and uh, this was sculpted in ZBrush and textured in Mari. Um, then I have this Gladiator Hulk, which I will be speaking about in detail. Uh, this was inspired by the slide sideshow collectibles and Bowen designs. Uh, this was modeled in Maya, ZBrush, and textured in Mari. Um, other than that, I could show you some of my studio work. Uh, this was something that I did for Into the Badlands. I did surfacing work for this entire scene. Uh, I got references from many museums and uh, such to make all the top wall panels and uh, other things. Uh, 
this is the same into the bell lens work. Um, this is something that me and Dinesh actually both worked on a while ago. Uh, keeps going on for the same into the bad lens. And this one is again stylized animation surfacing for Najab 2. So I surface these two characters uh, and also the uh, did some forward work. So all this full character and the props, this character, his clothing, this doll character for Najab 2, and another character. For this one, I did some environment work. So this background that you see was done in uh, in Mari, the surfacing. The same thing for this, the bulldozer, the underside. This one was uh, for how to train your dragon too, some of the machinery. And some helmets for characters and some environment assets for how to train your dragon too. These are some props for how to train your dragon too. And this one is for uh, Manly Madagascar, which was a show from DreamWorks. So these are different props that I worked on a while ago. This one again is Madagascar 3, the environment terrains. And this was for a show called Scare Shakeless. So I did the environments for it. And on this one, I did a version of Shrek, which was a puke variant. So I had to make Shrek look slimy and sticky. So it was mostly uh, a layered work, meaning I got a Shrek, the Shrek character, and then I had to make a version of it, which was slimy, and I had to add more uh, details to his clothing, like wetness and shine. Um, this one is again from another uh, Puss in Boots show. And uh, yeah, these are some few more props. For this one, this one is from uh, Puss in Boots. I didn't did environments for this. So these are some of the things that I have worked on uh, in studios. Um, there's a few more things that I worked on. Uh, which are for expense, but since they're not since it's not released yet, so I can't uh, show everything. But it, I can send you my website, so in the future maybe you can uh, take a look at it again. Yeah, Rogan, um, I have a question for you. So you have experience both in um, like animation and VFX. So do you think yes. the surfacing work? Like, is it the same concepts or like, where does it vary? Like, um, like, what do you think about it? So, when I first entered into visual effects, I thought maybe things would be really different and that uh, everyone did say that I was from animation. But when I started working on it, I found that uh, at least in terms of doing environments, there wasn't much change. The only difference that I found while doing visual effects work was the models. So the models would be to scale, but in animation, the models would be different. They would be exaggerated, but the surface details still remain the same. Concrete was still concrete and um, other materials were still the same. So for that, in that case, everything for me was a smooth transition. There wasn't any uh, any trouble. Yeah. And uh, can you also talk about that uh, Shrek uh, character? 
so for your information guys like the shrek character um i saw that character work in uh, 3d artist or 3d total magazine his work has uh, been the yeah okay it is in 3d total or 3d artist 3d total yeah so i saw rogan's work in 3d total like i don't know when but his work was published in front of the cover but that time i didn't know rohan but um i was really inspired by his work and yeah he is going to give a you know breakdown of it go ahead rohan right. so this character that i worked on uh, was mostly to uh work for for a self teaching uh, project so i wanted to get better at skin shading i wanted to get better at sculpting so i i i worked on learning more anatomy and getting better at the underlying forms trying to learn the bone structure i'm not a modeler uh, professionally but i wanted to have a model that i can surface and that it looks uh, good together as a whole so i'll just show you my process so the first idea came from this comic book called uh, planet hulk So I read about it a while ago, and uh, when I saw that there's a variant of Hulk that has more armory and more details, I got I was interested in uh, making it. I saw the story that Hulk is sent away to this another planet, and uh, he is being uh, held captive, and uh, he's made to fight in these arenas. So this idea came to me well before. uh the movie came out so this uh design the design is based on the comic book and the uh the collectible figures um the collectibles that i reference were uh the ones from bowen designs and uh sideshow so i was i was looking at how the helmet would be how their weapons would be and uh, how would be the overall pose of it so these two the ones on uh, the left and the right were the ones which i referred to for inspiration and the one in the middle i referred to for uh, the overall skin and body look of hulk um so, so in terms of in terms of references uh i went through a lot of uh, uh google images i googled uh, a lot of helmets uh, greek and roman helmets to get an idea for the design because although there is there was a sculpture or a collectible i didn't have it in my hand so to get a proper understanding of its shape i had to look for a lot of references on how how those helmets were and how they fit on the character so uh so these were some of the helmets that i looked at the ones with this with this spiky hair and uh the the, the damage details for the helmets while while they're where they're not in um for the skin as i said i looked at uh this this collectible on the left hand side for skin detail for subsurface detail and uh for in terms of uh, design there wasn't any um uh, exact one to one design that was already made uh, for the pose and for his armory so i kind of thought that okay maybe i could use a mace because uh the one in this he has like a club but i wanted to make it a little bit different so i looked at uh Greek and Roman uh, warriors uh, who fight fight in uh, in the arena, and I came up with this idea of a mace. So I googled a few mace designs, and then I added it to uh, my artwork. Um, in terms of uh, leather detail, the same thing. I I looked at a lot of. old uh, worn leather textures uh, to come up with this uh, sort of uh, material and texture feel and also 
uh, if you see closely uh, his shoulder armor uh, that didn't have much uh, information as to how it's been worn so I had to kind of google and figure out and try to understand how it's actually been uh, worn on the on the arm because if I have a shoulder armor there would be friction and uh, you know it won't be easy to uh, use in battle so so when I read the detail and description of how it was worn so there used to be a cloth underneath uh, underneath the armor so I, I had to add that in and uh, and make it work um, so those are the references. Uh, so in terms of sculpting, uh, I started from a Z sphere. Uh, then I used to use it to make it an adaptive skin to get a rough uh, block in for him. And uh, it was all uh, sculpted. The body was sculpted in Z brush, and the armor was uh, made in Maya. Uh, the details for the armor were also done in ZBrush, so the scratches and bumps and uh, damage details were all done in ZBrush. Um, so these are just a few views of him in ZBrush. So Rogan, so you worked on this project, yeah. right? So it looks like really complex. You put a lot of thoughts into it. like. Yeah. Like how long does it took you? So did you put like like timetable and you went with it or you just like took your own time and you did it? Yeah, actually that's a good question. The thing with uh, this this project was uh, I wrote down what, I, what needed to be done uh, piece by piece because I looked at it for the first time and I was overwhelmed. I was like, I don't think I can make it because it has got anatomy, which I'll have to again brush up on. It has got these armor, armory on his body and armor plates and and helmet. So it would take a long time because doing these individual objects for me uh, takes time. Since I, since I said I'm not really a professional modeler, so uh, I took it like uh, I just tried to enjoy the process. I just uh, first started. Uh, sculpting the body and then um, I started uh, watching these tutorials online um, this guy uh, his name is Proko so I started following him I took a few courses to improve my anatomy skills uh, that took some time I did a lot of sketching and then I started, started to implement those uh, anatomy details into my uh, character body and character model so yeah for for this it was a lot of patience and uh, taking it one by one step by step and not uh, seeing it uh, as a whole because that would really overwhelm me so that was my process and there's uh, also yeah, yeah there's also a question from the chat so Kim was okay. asking, so your process for VFX and animation is the same? Uh, yes. So for, I started doing surfacing uh, in DreamWorks. We use Mari for all our shows. And uh, in terms of surfacing detail for wood, for cement, for wraps, for all these environmental assets was uh, exactly the same when I moved into visual effects doing metal and things like those things like that it was it was just one to one it wasn't much uh, much change but at the same time I do understand that where this question comes from because uh, for example in animation uh, a leaf on a tree the art director would probably want uh, it to be more stylized so there are a few things that uh, the art director asked for to be stylized, to be more simplified. So I would say that it is a little bit uh, 
challenging to be uh, in animation because you need to understand the art director's vision for stylization whereas in visual effects you do have these references ready references which you can just google and then uh, implement it's just that's the only difference that i personally found yeah nice yeah you can go ahead yeah. with your thing yeah yeah so uh, this was about my zebrish modeling and uh, once the model was done i need to apologize that in zebrish and uh, exported it into maya and then brought it into mari uh, since this was done some time ago i uh, used a specular workflow instead of mari uh, if, if i have had to do this today i would probably use a uh, substance painter to do all the armor and metal uh, work so for example uh, the difference to the specular workflow versus the metallic workflow that uh, people use now and which is getting more and more popular is that uh, the color detail for uh, the metals comes from uh the diffuse for the metalness workflow whereas in the specular workflow the color detail for those metals the metallic reflection color comes from the specular so that's the only uh, difference they do say that the specular workflow is a bit more accurate since you can control the amount of reflectivity but uh, in practice and in production it's not much of a difference and metallic workflow solves two problems that is with just one map you can control both the diffuse and the uh, reflection that is if it was specular workflow if it's a gold material you would have to make the diffuse color the base color black and the specular color uh, yellow or orange but in a in a metallic workflow you just need to paint the the basic colors in your diffuse and the shader would do the rest of the job so you just make a metallic shader uh, and have metallic map which will tell the shader that this part is metallic or not so that yes work has been reduced because of the metallic workflow um so the same way for all the other accessories uh I used a specular workflow. I used uh, some references for leather. I used textures from textures.com uh, for the leather. Um, there is some uh, level of uh, photogrammetry work on the lower base to get the mud details. Uh, and uh, yeah, so for the squid, there was some amount of uh, SSS that I used. For the tip so that it looks more uh, organic and squishy so this is all his armory uh, for the body for the body i use a similar process uh, as the same specular uh, workflow uh, and i used uh, displacements from texturing xyz for getting the skin detail like pores and uh, and for the close up uh, since this was a skin since this was skin i the only extra map was an sss mask which i used uh, to give it a bit more translucency so yeah uh, so That rogan be, what render yeah. did you use like did you use arnold or yeah so i used arnold uh, but the arnold that is there today there's a bit of a difference so they have updated their shader so the shader that i used back then they are no longer uh, supported now now it's more of a like metallic and now it's much more better because they were in a transition phase between uh, metallic and specular workflow at that time and even though i was using a specular workflow uh, they still had uh, sliders for metalness and roughness so that shader that i used was a in between phase shader that had metalness and specular together 
Right. Yeah, I use Arnold for the shading, shading and rendering. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, proceed with it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean, this is this is about it, and this is what I I use to do the surfacing and modeling of of this character. Yeah, that looks like quite a lot of work uh, you put on there. So definitely it shows your output there because Thanks. yeah, when you show the collectibles, like when you showed this, I didn't believe that it's a render. So it kind of looks uh, identical. Right. So do you guys have any questions um, regarding what Rogan talked so far? Uh, I have a question about the cloth that's underneath the armor. Yeah, it seems to have some kind of like uh, stringy details. Are they like transparencies or like fur? Yeah, so that's that's a good question. So what I used for uh, the under armor cloth was eggshell. So for all these fibers, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I sculpted the eggshell uh, for so that it looks like there is some sort of uh, threads that that are coming out. I use the same eggshell for the same. Uh, the the head. Oh, right. oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Rogan, you have been working in the industry for 15 years, so you trained your eye pretty good. Um, so when you are doing this project, you know, when you're modeling it, texturing it and sculpting it, did you art direct yourself or did anybody like critique your work or did you show someone what they think or anything like that? Actually, I did. So at that time, when I modeled it in the uh, did a first pass for this, I sent it to my old instructors. Uh, that was a decade, decade more than a decade ago, but they were kind enough to like look at it and do some paint overs for it to let me know. Okay, maybe this one doesn't look right or his pose is not right. So I I I got in touch with my old instructor, anatomy instructor from Van Arts. And I showed it to him, and he said that at first, he said, oh, the pose is nice, but I don't feel the weight of his body. So do this, do that. And then that's how I tried to um, improve my work. And I'd also put it, and also in general, like so far, any personal work that I've been doing, I have been posting on, on CG Society or CG Total Forum. So, there are a lot of people, either junior or senior, but everyone has some inputs. And that's how I keep trying to uh, learn and uh, unlearn things. Yeah, that's a you know, really valid point. Yeah, you have to put your work out there, right? So when yeah. you're seeing your work for a long time, you kind of like um, used to that work. So you don't see the mistakes. It looks awesome for you, but the next day if you see it, it kind of looks like there's a lot of mistakes there. I totally agree with it. Yeah, I mean, that is so true. Like, if you keep staring at your artwork, you feel like, uh, where am I going with this? It's like, even if you look at the references and it matches, you're like, am I doing okay? Am I not doing okay? The same thing in a studio, right? Yeah. Where yep. I am working on an asset, I would definitely ask people around, do you think this looks okay? Because I've been staring at it for so long. And I think I've lost uh, lost that kind of reference point that what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's true. It's true. Yeah, uh, guys. Do you guys have any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, so, like you mentioned, Mari and Substance painter and designer. Um, I'm in interested in working in film and games. Does it matter if I use design um, painter or Mari, or should I learn both? I would say at this point, uh, since Substance Painter has uh, has a Udemy workflow that they incorporated just last month, I would say that if you just do Substance Painter uh, and learn a bit of designer that would be enough for now if you are interested you can still learn mari because uh, the good thing about mari is that it can handle a lot of uh, objects at one time in substance painter 
suppose this character hulk i can't get the entire object into my scene so i'll have to work piece by piece but in mari i can load in like 10 objects and uh, do, see them all at once in context so that's the only difference between mari and substance right now but okay. in terms of yeah, but in terms of material, I feel that the feedback that Substance Painter viewport gives is really good, and I would choose to uh, focus more on Substance Painter right now. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. Uh, that was a good question, Kim. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? Do you primarily work on laptop or desktop? Uh, I did this help on a, on a laptop. I had an um, Dell laptop and I somehow managed to uh, make it on a laptop because the good thing, well, the first good thing was ZBrush. ZBrush seems to run on fairly uh, mid-range laptops and um, that's why I could get my sculpting done and then export normal maps and displacement maps so that I could keep things lighter. Also, in terms of hardware, I did put in some efforts before starting this project. So there was a website where uh, uh, it showed that you can put this uh, paste on your thermal paste on your CPU so that you can overclock your computer. So th I did that before I started this project so that I could overclock it a bit so that I could get renders a bit faster. Nice. Thank you. Right, no uh, do you guys have any other question, guys? I'm good for now. Okay, so then, okay, so we are going to the next part of this uh, interview session. So whenever we have a guest here in our event and we'll uh, give some questions for them to answer. So let's see you know what we're gonna have to say so he asked how do i feel to be part of this uh, growing booming industry so uh, after investing like decades of uh, time and effort into cg i kind of feel happy and i feel great that it is doing so well and uh, it also makes me happy that uh, me along with my peers are doing great and that all of us have contributed in some small way to make it a success so it's a it's a good feeling yeah yeah move on to the next yeah so what sparked your interest in this industry uh as a kid I grew up in a, in a time and an era in a country where I just had two television channels and uh, everything seemed really dull. But when I saw just a logo animation or something that was done using computer graphics, it was surreal to, to watch. But uh, so that was like when it actually hit me that, okay, this is something interesting. So there must be someone somewhere doing something like this. And then later on as I grew up, I had friends around, I was lucky enough to have friends who were gamers. So I, I, was, I played games from the Atari, which was two bit, to the eight bit, to 16 bit, and then, and then so on. So that evolution of graphics in gaming from two to 16 and, and beyond was just too difficult to ignore and uh, I started doing a lot of online uh, research on my uh, dial-up modem uh, at that time to find out oh how, how is this being made and you know because I I felt that I need to appreciate what they have done a bit more um, that was that was my first initial uh, steps that uh, made me interested in, in, in computer graphics. And also uh, another thing that I remember was uh, I had a library subscription and there was a World Book Encyclopedia which had renders of planets like Jupiter and 
and Earth, and all of them were uh, CG rendered. So I I could actually see that there's a amount of a lot of amount of detail and work gone into that, and all of that together. I felt that uh, one day if I could be part of this, it would be great. I did not know how because there wasn't much awareness, but it would have been it would be nice. But so now today I'm lucky to be uh, in it. All right. Um, how do you find motivation as an artist? Um. So in today's world with all negative news and toxic news, it doesn't uh, take much for me to just come back to my computer, go to Maya, go to Mari uh, or, or Substance and then start doing something more creative. So just as an escape from the, 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 the toxic news that there is around us. So I naturally gravitated towards uh, doing CG work as a as a, as an escape, um, but even while doing CG work, there are times when uh, that can get overwhelming. If you are at a studio or if you are trying to do some uh, a, a huge personal uh, work, so for that, like I said before, was that I tried to break down the task into smaller chunks. Uh, and uh, try to find happiness in doing uh, a part of that entire project bit by bit. So I do an asset, and then I, and once I'm happy with it, I'm uh, I go ahead. So this is how I keep keep myself motivated to keep doing more and more instead of uh, being overwhelmed by the amount of work at hand. Oh yes, and I also do visit art station like most artists so for so for being more inspired. What is possible? Um, okay, what are some of the creative suggestions that can be applied? Uh, that's a really good question, and that's something that I always keep thinking to myself: is that uh, we as artists are entertainers, right? And uh, shouldn't entertainers who entertain people be cheerful and happy as well? Like, shouldn't we? I mean, should, I mean, we don't want to become a sad clown who just entertains people, but personally isn't uh, isn't happy. So, uh, what I would feel is that. The first step would be work-life balance. Uh, I think that would help uh, give you time to yourself so that you can uh, center yourself and be positive and enthusiastic enough to get back to doing what you are doing. And also other things would be uh, at, at the studio, which I have actually seen, are like fun events like pumpkin carving, uh, which uh, which is a group activity which brings people together, and uh, you let you let your creativity flow along with uh, some teamwork. So you feel that you are part of something bigger and something more exciting. Uh, even even like dressing up for Halloween is a good good thing and a good. Uh, creative break from just doing your job. The other things that uh, I feel that if there are uh, discussion groups and forums for uh, people who do extracurricular things like gaming or book reading or photography, that would uh, really help uh, improve the employee morale. and. It will be an exciting thing to do. I personally, in my previous studios, was involved in uh, a photography group, and that helped me a lot uh, to improve my surfacing skills. Like, for example, when we used to go out 
in the outdoors. I can breathe in fresh air, the first thing. And the second thing was I have to take a lot of macro photos. And that really helped me uh, improve my surfacing uh, skills because I could see the details that are present in nature and how the textures are. So it was a combination of uh, uh, work and pleasure. And that, that is what I feel that if this sort of mentality is applied, it, 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 would, it would be a good thing. Um, okay. What would this industry teach about people skills? So, personally, I would say that uh, interacting with a broad range of uh, people, personalities, and cultures is vital to creativity and art. There is so much that you can learn and unlearn from uh, talking to interesting and creative people that you can either implement or, or you can be in awe. Everyone has a story of their own. So my interpretation of people skills is, is trying to enrich my, my life and give me more perspective to see a situation or a problem from. So uh, that is what I feel about uh, people skills is that if you're around like-minded people who uh, lift your spirits up, that is all that you need uh, in terms of people skills. Uh, while I, I have said that, um, there will be times where uh, there would be a conflict of interest. So my solution to that would be if there is uh, some sort of empathy from both sides, we can meet each other halfway. Yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah, that's well said, Rogan. Uh, I think you missed a question. Um, the question was, what was the most fun creative work have you done? Yeah. So, in my previous studio, uh, uh, my surfacing lead was, uh, was, was, took us out on an, uh, on a thing, I don't know what I should call it, where we could learn about character, uh, surfacing. So what happened was that they put me in a seat. They took me to this makeup class and started, uh, putting makeup on my face. So that was something that was so hilarious. I mean, I cannot, I, it's just something like that has never happened to me before, but it was, it actually <laughs> made sense because that class was for makeup and how to make your jawline sharper or how do you make your uh, self look like a homeless guy or how do you, uh, you know, uh, change your personality with just makeup and definitely I could see that that makeup class had a direct impact on character surfacing because <clears throat> what the makeup artist did to me was he painted half of my face as a homeless guy <laughs> and half of my face as a, as a K-pop singer. Wow. So I could easily feel that there's so much potential in just color that uh, you can actually change a person's personality. Yeah, I totally, That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with it, Rogan. Um, because I've seen makeup artists, what they do is they try to lift up the jaw or the cheekbone yeah. to make it like really square shaped or make the jaw bigger and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that sounds really fun. I would have shared it with you, but it's a little embarrassing. So maybe some mm -hmm. other time. Yeah, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe at the end of the session. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, where so, what are some challenges you faced before yeah. working in this industry? So, for in terms of challenges, this is something which I uh, 
try to not think about because it kind of uh, brings back older memories. But um, from where I am, from India, there wasn't much uh, support for uh, art in general at that time. Everyone around me was either a doctor or an engineer. This I'm talking like 15 years ago when I said, when, when, when people used to ask me, what do you want to do? I was, I was like, I wanted to be an artist. And, and everyone is like, really? You want to be an artist? And then everyone made fun of me. So it was a challenge trying to, it is, it is something I would put it this way. Like it was a challenge to find investors, that is my family, to invest in me and give me uh, moral support or otherwise to be in, the, in this field. So that is that is some of those those challenge I, challenges that I had in terms of uh, changing that philosophy or way of thinking of people around me. The second challenge, which was more practical, was that at that time, doing an animation course or uh, or things like that was expensive, and it wasn't even uh, so well known uh, that I could just. Uh, join join somewhere and learn like today like if I, if it was today it, i would have been it would have been easier to convince uh, people around you like your parents and things like such but yeah those were some of the things that uh, that i would say as a as a challenge and that same sort of mentality to try to show that there is uh, value in art and cg i think Somewhere at the back of my mind, my subconscious is kind of motivates me to keep pushing myself just to, you know, tell, like, like show my friends that, okay, look, this is possible. Uh, the business is booming. Everything is uh, doing well. So what the choice that investment <laughs> you did in giving me a chance to get into CG is, uh, has worked out well. to the next question um, what advice would you give someone entering CG uh, I would say that CG visual effects animation and things like that seem very glamorous when you just watch it on TV or in the movies, it feels like, oh, this is so cool, but uh, it's like the tip of the iceberg, right? You, there's just so much that goes into making CG, like like late nights and a lot of planning, a lot of uh, teamwork and and effort. So I would say that if you're getting into this field. What you need to have is patience, uh, take things uh, step by step, and not be overwhelmed by what you need to do. At the same time, once you go through it and once it's done, that feeling of uh, achievement that, okay, so I am so close to something that I had uh, visualized for myself, is that feeling is a really, really good feeling. Uh, what do you think about the future of uh, CG industry? Yeah, so uh, about about two decades ago, when I got interested in CG, um, I mean, I was still in school, but I I uh, felt that it was such a niche industry that. Uh, I didn't know how I would become a part of something something that is so so remote and so niche. But today there is some form of computer generated imagery embedded in every video, every ad, every form of uh, art. 
that you see. So it shows the trajectory of CG that is in that is used. Um, I mean, the use of CG has exploded over the years, and uh, it's it finds its application in a lot of things like architecture, theater, um, aviation, uh, 3D printing today, um, movies, obviously, simulation, visualization, and many other things. So I feel that the future of CG is really bright and its applications are so diverse. So it's not uh, necessary that if you learn a tool today, for example, substance painter or substance designer, you need to just limit yourself to movies and animation. You can also get into uh, like fabric design because I've seen a lot of uh, documents about how substance designer is being used in the, uh, the clothing industry and in the uh, even I think uh, the CG rendered turntables for websites like IKEA or Wayfair are done using uh, these these uh, softwares. Uh, so I I feel that uh, it, it's the, the, my prediction is that it would be really diverse in the future and uh, it is going to mature as the time passes. Uh, also, another thing um, I wanted to say was recently because of COVID, uh, a friend of mine he he uh, was in a theater company. Uh, he used to act, but. Uh, because of this uh, virus going on, he could not and they cannot come together and act on stage. So what they did was, and I've been talking to this person, what they did was they made CG uh, rough replicas of themselves and uh, started giving voiceovers to those things so that, so that the play can go on and they don't need to stop their uh, work. So I feel with so much diversity in application of CG, I feel it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, good thing. Okay. Um, what are some of your art related hobbies? So um, CG itself is a hobby of mine, even though it's my it's my job. But apart from that, uh, I do a lot of sketching. I recently started doing sketching on my iPad. I do a lot of illustration. I do travel photography. This is before COVID, obviously. And uh, I also do write some short stories on my on my free time. I haven't really published anything, but I can show you if you can see my screen. Uh, so this is some of my photography work. Uh, if you can see. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I've been doing as like a hobby over the couple of years. Uh, oh, nice. It's not that I invested a lot of money in uh, buying a good camera. I just started taking photos with my mobile phone so this is one thing and uh, another thing would be something that i just saved out so these are some of the photos that i took while traveling uh, to montreal and nice things like that is it trump sorry no, never mind. Keep going. Yeah, 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 I like. Uh, I know this place. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, these are some of my my travel photography hobbies that I've been doing. Uh, this is when I went to Yellowknife. Nice. And this was during the Christmas market. So I take photos of the art and, and environments and some macro photos um, that that uh, that excite me. Nice. 
yeah i really like your uh, composition like how it like leads to the picture and i also like the lighting of it as well <laughs> yeah i mean the thing that i see while while taking photos is that uh, if there is a story behind it it is uh, it's even even better of course and other than that uh, i mean i don't know if i should show this but i'm still in the process of finishing things but i did i have been writing like short stories based on mm-hmm. um, the hard work and the illustration that i have done so it's like an ongoing thing there are a few more uh, things that i have written uh, and yeah. stories but it's not yet ready for public so it's a work in process yeah um, yeah and uh, there's some illustration work too that i can show you that i do as my hobby so this is uh, some of the some of the illustration work that i've done nice yeah like you like really the cartoony style like really stylized yeah yeah stylized uh your characters nice yeah and most of these things come at a time where say i'm so i'm uh, like really really burned out doing 3d and i feel like uh, so this particular one i was really burned out while doing uh, work cg work so i was like oh, i need to meditate um so rogan you yeah. have a uh, yeah i think uh, yeah now it's gone yeah so this one of my one of my illustration that i've done in this is like i f- i feel that i need to meditate so i was like okay let me start sketching something on illust- on on meditation because i'm like so burned out and this is what i came up with that uh, it's all in your mind that's what i what that's what i titled it and uh, yeah you can take a look at it i will maybe maybe dinesh will uh, Uh, have a link to my website sure i, I will share the link for it. sure yeah so yeah. guys do you guys have any other questions so far for again yeah uh, what do you think about um how studios out here in the us are outsourcing to like india the philippines stuff like that like what do i feel about it yeah are you worried or um with the amount of work that is uh, needed i think i think uh, we won't have uh we won't there won't be still a lot of work to do it's not that i think that the only only uh, only projects that are so overwhelming to artists here in north america would go elsewhere as in the project is so huge that we can do it and only then the extra work that is impossible to finish here would be sent outside that's what i feel okay yeah thanks rogan uh, that was a really good answer and do you guys have any other questions for rogan I think that's it no, I guess. Yeah. Oh, when case a question. Go ahead, Wanky. No, no, I'll be good. Oh, you good? Okay. Thank you. So, Rogan, uh, I really appreciate that you're coming to this event and uh, you did like uplift uh, our spirits and the questions you answered was really eye-opening. I learned yeah. a lot. Um Kim yeah. Kim was really happy uh, for your question. So, I'm happy as well and yeah, I would like to share your work with them as well. So, Good luck with your future work and everything. Uh, thanks, Rogan. Yeah, no problem. Thank thanks, Rogan. Thank you. Thank you. Opportunity. Yeah.